Pat. Yeah, and it's Chris Forrester. They're changing the angle of play, and John Mountney thought about having a crack there. Comes back off a Drogheda defender. Drogheda scampering back, and it's Connor Kane, the fullback, that eventually clears it, but only as far as Mountney. He angles it in against far towards Forrester, and he takes a nick for his trouble. And St. Pat's will have an opportunity this game. Free comes in from McClelland. Sam Bone indeed went for it, but winter-like conditions despite us almost in the month of April, but Drahada managed to clear the danger from that first dangerous set piece. Doesn't quite go to plan for St. Pat's, and Drahada will look to counter now as they play the ball over the top, but Chris Lyons had retreated and wasn't really ready for that ball over the top. And Desmond finds Griffin once more. It's Coughlin now. Back and available in space as Forrester plays it outside for Matty Smith. He's got around the full back and Smith goes for it. But just didn't have the angle of the shot to test out Amoso early on. Standing last week um, up in Tala and he's already starting to get on the ball and start to dictate play. So it'd be really interesting to see how he continues from last week. Yeah, McClellan plays it back. It's Griffin. Matty Smith is on the outside. Matty Smith now is involved. Gets a nice turn and Griffin... Look to be away, but the whistle goes from John McLaughlin, today's referee. Producing yellow cars, but the games last week were refereed well, and I'd like to think today will be pretty similar. Chris Lyons plays it out around the outside for Mark Doyle. Looks to be held up by Mountain. Mark Doyle, let's go. It's straight down the throat of Yaros, who makes a comfortable save for St. Pat's. Yaros. Now it's Dara Mark. He does well to hold on and find the space. Tries to work the angle for himself. Has to go back as far as Deegan. Deegan back for Massey and it's Marky again. But he's closed down by St. Pat's and that's good play. And Marky's pass goes awry. Cut out by Mountney. And Pat's have to work it all the way back to Yarosh. Man on the outside this time is Robbie Benson. He has a look up. Plays it low across the box. Matty Smith tries to work an angle and came off a draw at a body in the... See from the sideline to see how they can kind of negate that. It's going to be important for the midfield three of, of Gary Deegan, Jake Hoyland and, and Ronan Murray to try and, uh, try and negate that. Good play here from Forrester around the outside. First real involvement for Ronan Murray for Drogheda in this game. Big step up from First Division to Premier Division and a first away game of the season for Drogheda. Still somewhat finding their feet, but... They will have been delighted to have made that winning start a week ago. Brown plays it back to Murray. Can't quite control it, but under huge pressure from Lennon. Bit of a scrap on the deck. The decision goes the way of the home team with St. Pat's. Yeah, I think I think I don't think the referee even knew where the ball was on that one. I think it was the easiest decision was just to blow a point one direction and um, to try and uh, create some chances. And here come Drogheda and it's Dara Markey. Mark Doyle has his hand up. He's looking for the ball at the back post and that is for Mark Doyle. But he just got underneath that header and he'd be disappointed with that. Not advised to be too far out of the goal. Ronan Coughlin now finds Matty Smith but he loses it in his feet. And Drogheda break and it's the full back. It's James Brown that's coming forward but Lennon with a terrific challenge. And it breaks down from a Drogheda point of view and had to try to get going with Coughlin, but he just couldn't quite control that. And we've two men on the deck. One is the full back for Drogheda, and the other is the Pats captain. Yeah, and Gary Deegan's just being booked there. And that we have a runner with Robbie Benson, um, or Chris, or whoever's going to be that, that person that's going to run. Yeah, another somewhat mistimed tackle over there. This time it was Chris Lyons, and he too is about to enter the notebook. But again, the Drogheda defensive effort was equal to it. Bowen challenges for this one, loses out the header, but Lyons can't find Doyle. And this time it's Jamie Lennon with the mistimed tackle. And that's the third booking in quick succession, and it's the first for Pats. Lively, in the opening 20 minutes or so, maybe not so much in the last five or so minutes. Ronan Coughlin trying to get onto this, and Coughlin takes a knock laid on from Dane Massey. Whistle goes again, and it'll be a free kick for St. Pats. Drogheda on the defensive again, but after the big build-up, it's easy for Odomoso, and he gets Drogheda motoring quickly with Brown down the right-hand side. Mark Doyle onto it. Brown goes for the return. Pat's on the retreat, and Jamie Lennon does well. To cut it out, Benson. 
Little ball over the top. Coughlin tried to cushion the header back down into his direction and the whistle goes. Referee had spotted the infringement from Drogheda. It's, it's probably a bit harsh being on the switch of what with so many of these new rules, the interpretation of handball, I'm not so sure, but um, this isn't, certainly Chris Forrester won't be giving out now. <laughs> Brown on the outside, plays it off Smith. I was lucky to get the, <laughs> the call there once more from the referee. Again, I'm not, I'm not sure on that. Um, it's obviously ricocheted back up on him in the hand. It's just so close. I'm not sure what he's supposed to do, but... Um, you can see from Tim, Tim Clancy's asking questions to the fourth official. I'm not sure what he wants the player to do there. And with the high ball watched all the way by Gary Deegan. Header down from Deegan. Benson tried to get on the end of it and it's Chris Lyons steaming through the middle. But it's the defender Lee Desmond. Deegan in a battle for it. Forrester too. It's Strada that come away with it and look to go around the outside with Brown. Player goes to ground as Markey. Referee says play on. Pats look to break. And break quickly. Ronan Coughlin looks for it in the middle. Oh, he just lost his footing. Pre-season as well, but... Oh, through ball from Jaron Markey. Looks to have set Chris Lyons away, but the flag away on the far side. Drahada trying to orchestrate something deep into injury time now at the end of this opening half. Doesn't quite work out for Connor Kane, and they have to go all the way back to Dane Massey. He floats one over the top for Murray to run onto. Murray gets to it and flashes it across the area. And Chris Lyons has to go and retrieve it, coming out of that centre position. The fullback Jake Brown is up on attack again as finds Markey tries to get a turn, but he's closed down as the referee. Right, and away we go. Back to Mountney. Coughlin now back to goal, plays it around the corner for Smith, retains it on the edge of the box. Coughlin has it again, tries to tease Drogheda out of that shape. All a bit close for Pats and it comes now for Benson, he makes the angle for the shot. Oh, he'll be hugely disappointed on its way. Pats have it back, Benson again. It's McClellan, Birmingham is around the outside, McClellan goes himself. Back. More looking for the counter opportunity. Pat's work it through the faces. Lennon around the outside and out to the channel once more with McClellan. Tried to be held up by Brown. McClellan does well, works it inside. Tried to work the space and a little bit scrappy. But Drahada scrambled it away. Shot comes in from Benson. Works for Maddie Smith and he too has one. Waterford's physical presence really well last week. I'd imagine they're going to have to be at the, at the best to, to do it again today. The two pals not so uh, friendly this afternoon because Birmingham was just late there on Dara Markey. And will Birmingham <laughs> enter the notebook as well? Trying to protest his innocence, but certainly he caught Dara Markey, who thankfully is OK, and Birmingham escapes the booking on this occasion. He was going to go for his pocket there. Yeah. He and changed his mind. Ronan Murray's ball in. is worked out by Pats, but it's back in. Drahada. it trying to get something on it comes it back to Murray he thought about the shot himself and could find his footing on the edge of the box comes now to Birmingham plays it in can it work to a Pat's body McClelland has two stabs at it but can't really get good connection on it again Darrow Markey has gone down on the edge of the box for Drogheda Pat's taking no notice and it's flashed in and it's flashed across and it's into the back of the net from Ronan Coughlin yeah. Drogheda are unhappy with it Mark Doyle is having words with the match referee saying that Darren Markey was on the ground for quite a number of moments in the lead up to that but Pats have taken the lead through Ronan Coughlin that goal is going to stand and overall I suppose on the balance of play what they deserve yeah I think so we said it just before half time and after half time that it was important that Pats kind of get the, grab the game by the scruff of the neck and, and get out and put pressure on I know Tim and Kev and the, some of the draw team are, are giving out, but listen, there's no rule. Um, I never really bought into that, to be honest with you. It's up to the referee to stop the game. It wasn't a serious injury on Darrett. Okay, he might have got a little bit hurt, but certainly not enough to stop the play. We can't be just kicking the ball out all the time. And that sent the forward position. Um, I think draw they need to kind of get an understanding on what way they're going to defend it and, and see can they get back into the game that way. Yeah, coming together between Desmond and Lyons. Referee, let's play run on. James Brown had made the 
run forward and now it's Ronan Murray onto it like a flash spreads the play Connor Kane is in space away on the far side Ronan Coughlin goes to meet him but Connor Kane head down heads for the box draw to just lose out with Mark Doyle Pats have it back yeah two attacking positive changes uh, Brandon was a young player here at Pats and, and Dinny was a player here at Pats as well so although we've been saying it's important to draw to kind of look at different options to try and get back into the game you know, there's still 22 and a half, 23 minutes to play. There's still plenty of time for them. It's important that they don't concede that second goal while Pats are on top. Mountney just gives it away. Dinny Corcoran has an opportunity. Ball at the feet. Ops to go to Doyle. Doyle has Murray in close attendance. Goes himself. Doyle. Oh, and Yaros lost possession of it and it's into the back of the net for Drogheda. You know, alone all over the world and, and missing chances. Game in, game out, but nothing's ever said. The problem with a keeper is, no matter what age he is, and we've seen it the other night in, in Ireland with, with... Ireland, who in turn loses it to Lennon. Benson knew the challenge was coming in from the Drogheda man, Dinny Corcoran. And it's Corcoran who gets the benefit of the doubt off the referee. <laughs> yeah, I think Robbie could be a little bit fortunate there. You know, he's picked up a yellow card, which I thought was a little bit harsh on the tackle on Deegan, but in fairness to Dinny's got, got in and got the ball and got away from him. And, Robbie's had a tiny little bit of a, a pull on him. Um. Murray winds up for this free kick. Straight down the throat of the Pats defence. And get a second go at it. Have a man on the outside and that's Brown. More forward position. He's come away from goal again though. As the second half has progressed. Now what can Drogheda work with Connor Kane? Tried to be held up by Mountney Kane. Flashes one across. Dinny Corcoran tries to latch onto it. Back inside to Highland, the skipper. One over the top. Doyle will chase it. Mountney is with him. Doyle takes it on the deck. Good footwork, sees him get around. John Mountney flashes one across, but it's cut out. In, in the final tour out in them areas. Yeah, sad to report that the rain is making an appearance here at Richmond Park. Drada not perturbed. It's Murray. Flashes one across, Brandon Birmingham was unmarked in that Pats box. Stevie be disappointed with that, John has got to take more care in his deliveries. There's another high challenge, a high boot goes in from a Pats player. It'll be another yellow card, this time to Lee Desmond. It's a, a platform to go and attack. Matty Smith is chasing this one, does well with a little clever back heel. Onto it now is Chris Forrester on the edge of the box. Two in front of him. Forrester works it onto his left. Manages to find King. He keeps it in. Gives it away from a possession point of view to Branding. Birmingham works out for Murray. Murray flashes it across and Yara stood up strong. Drada still have it. Eventually Sam Bone tries to get boot to ball. Just gotten too much away from Ronan Murray but he's done quite well to get a strike off. But feet has covered his near post well. Yeah, another coming together between opposing players. We would have hoped this would be in a fortress, and, and, and to be honest with you, I think it will this year. Um, you know, it, it, it's probably a goal that, as you said, Vita will probably never concede it again, so it's just a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, can draw it, take all three with Mark Doyle. Harps, while Pats have a Dublin derby to prepare for against Bowes. Perhaps they're not finished in this one. It was Coughlin's shot that wasn't too far away and Pat still have it. And at the back post is King and King has got one. And as Drada scored late on this week, they're on the receipt last week, they're on the receiving end of it. Second half, the two substitutes linking up there. And it's resulted in Pat's taking the lead late, late on. Four minutes to be added on at the end of the game here. Tempers just boiling over inside the box. Jamie Lennon being accused of trying to wind down the clock. Back now with Brown. Brown on the outside finds Dinny Corcoran. Corcoran flashes one into the box. The header comes in. King with that goal in the 90th minute. But have Drahada got a response. Mark Doyle found by Dinny Corcoran. Doyle. One thing on his mind was get into the box. Down towards that corner once more. As indeed there is the final whistle.
Joined by uh, Draw the United striker Dinny Corcoran as we look ahead to this Saturday's upcoming game against Finn Harps. Um, you got off the mark for the first get for your first goal of the season. How delighted were you? Yeah, I was delighted. Obviously, but uh, unfortunately, it was uh, on the wrong side of the result, so it didn't count for much. But um, yeah, it's nice to get off the mark. The first goal is good. Yeah, you know, a striker coming in is so important to get the first goal to clear any sort of pressure that you might be feeling. How, how like relieved are you to get that then, that first goal? You know. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, the first one usually is the hardest one to get, and then once you get it, you kind of build on it. So confidence grows. So um, yeah, I'll be looking to add to it this Saturday now. Confidence. Yeah, looking ahead to Saturday, you know, Finn Harps have had a really, really good start to the season, picking up six points from a possible of six. Uh, difficult game. It's going to be very difficult. Yeah, Finn Harps are always. Uh, <coughs> Well organised, tough, physical team. So it's definitely going to be tough, and like you said, they're off to a flying start. So their confidence is going to be sky high. So um, yeah, it promises to be a good game. Yeah. Thanks for your time. I'm joined by Tim Clancy as we look ahead to this Saturday's upcoming game against Finn Harps. Uh, Tim, obviously a disappointing result on Saturday there, but um, you know performance probably. You know, can't complain with just probably a lack of concentration and for the two goals. Um, yeah, listen, a lot of positives to take from uh, Saturday um, until the very last minute. We were we were involved in the game. We were competitive, and uh, to concede the goal so late, um, it's deflating. We were on the other end of the week before when we got a late goal against Waterford. So, uh, but no, we can take plenty of positives from it, and it was a very good performance um, against a really good team. So. Uh, we we'll take that into this week and uh, obviously looking ahead to Finn Harps. We've had a great start to the season with a um, brilliant home win against Bowes and an amazing win out in uh, Oriel there last time out. So uh, we know it's going to be a very difficult game. Um, Finn Harps are very hard to play against and um, Ollie does a remarkable job up there every every single season. So we know it's going to be difficult but um, we prepare well this week now and hopefully um, get a good performance again on Saturday. Yeah, um, Dinny got off the mark first goal of the season um, really good for a striker who's only coming into the club to, to get a first goal so early on in the season yeah listen Dinny's missed a, a little bit of pre-season and uh, he missed a lot of football over the last couple of years so it's it's managing the game time with Dinny and managing the load and training and um, he's, but he's looking sharper and sharper now he's had half an hour in both games and as he said there he set the goal up against Waterford for Jimmy to put the ball in for the own goal and then um, he scores then he capitalises on a on a goalkeeping error, which it just shows that Dinny's got that little natural instinct of a striker in there in the box. And um, it's more pleasing the, uh, how well he's coming on. And it's great for him to get off the mark and get a goal. And um, himself and Chrissy as well, uh, doing really well for us. So, um, no, listen, again, it's not just Dinny as well, though, but there's been very good performances throughout the whole squad. And again, if we just knock out a few little sloppiness uh, for the goals, um, we should be all right. Yeah, as we mentioned there, Finn Harps, you know, they've started the season really well. Um, so obviously a lot of preparing will have to be done for for such a, a difficult game who they'll come down to United Park and they won't make it easy at all for us. No, they're a good team. Um to beat Bowes and Dundalk in the same season is good, never mind in the same week. Uh remarkable uh start for the season for, for Ollie and uh, there'll be a little bit of pressure on them now because they're probably expected to come down and beat us now on, on Saturday. So uh, um and us against Waterford, we were probably we were probably the the favourites in that game, and then going to St Pat's um, was a little bit of a, a wake up call, and where we're at, and um, we have to be careful about um, expectations that um, people around the club have because we're we're still only promoted, um, we're still part time, um, and budget wise, we're nowhere near the big lads in the league. So um, the game against Finham is going to be very important for us in the, in the grand scheme of the whole season. So we're looking looking forward to it. Yeah, we appreciate your time and we wish you all the best for Saturday. Cheers, Levy.